working well with you. Yeah, I just want to um, thank God for this time we that we have been waiting for. Uh, we we've been waiting to have our, this special guest online for a, a while. Uh, by God's grace, this is going to be the uh, private th thought uh, attempt to make sure um, we have him around. And by the grace of God, we are here today. This is an update where we get uh, information about what is going on around the world. And we are blessed with people uh, around the world seeing what God is doing. Uh, the update is the platform that gives us understanding and give us a better idea of what we are called to do. And you are made for something and God is blessing you for something and what you are being called for. Maybe you are here, you don't know what you are called for. Or you don't know how to go about it. There are, there are maybe one or two people that will, know, that will know how to put it through what you need to do. And that is why this program is very, very important. You will be here to hear from uh, um, an icon, uh, a producer, uh, an actor, and many, many uh, movie writer today. Maybe God is leading you in that direction and you want to you, you, will, you want to use his life to be a blessing to you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me to this studio, um, a friend, a brother, a minister of the gospel to us well, Damilola Mike Bamloy. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much sir, for being our guest today to us well. He's yes, sir. Uh, 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 a privilege to to have you, and I believe God has blessed us to have you around even at this time. Thank you so much. Sir. We bless Thank God, you. sir. Thank you. Thank you very yes. much. Uh, to everyone that is watching, I just want to uh, uh, they want to know who is Damlola McBamloye. Um, Damlola McBamloye is I'm a drama minister. Um, I preach the gospel through drama. I am married to Emanuela, Dr. Emanuela Mike Bamiloye. I'm a father of Gloria Shemilogo Mike Bamiloye and um, the first child of evangelist Mike Bamiloye, a citizen child of God and um, a lover of Christ. Yeah, it, it, it's a privilege to have you around, sir. So when I look at, I've been looking around and um, your, your, you coming on this platform today uh, uh, is in two or three categories. Number one, being a seed. And what I mean a seed, mm. that, that is pastor's, for, uh, uh, pastor's seed for, I mean, pastor's seed, you know, because I have a pro program mm. that is also tagged the seed. It's also only mainly for uh, pastor's children. And right. also um, a drama minister, uh, in a ministry whereby um, your father also uh, is also part is is the is the, uh, the CEO or the uh, the owner of that ministry as well, and a father, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a unique person. So when you look at all this thing that you all this kind of cap that we have, let's start with uh, you as uh, as an individual. How okay. did you? Uh, what what your childhood look like? Mm. So um, I was born into the ministry. I was born into the drama ministry, and so I, I experienced everything. So uh, my father, and also I call, and also the people in Mount Zion, at the, like I call them my fathers because you know Mount Zion is not just about um, daddy and mommy Gloria and my family. Mazar is made up of like eight families together who have been serving God through drama and till now they are still together, you know. So I called them my fathers and my mothers because I was born, I grew, I was born in their midst. I grew up since I was a baby, I've known them all my life, you know. So I call them my fathers, you know. So they watered the ground, they cleared the ground for, they cleared the path for my generation. And, um, you know, it's often said that, you know, the fathers, they, um, they, 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 they walk the ground, they, they clear the ground so that the children, we have a smooth sail, you know, 
that's not to say that we, I, I didn't have my challenges, uh, my, my ups and downs, but you know, uh, what happens in every, as generation comes, you know, there is always a double dose of anointing that kinds of, you know, makes, it's, it's, it's like it's opposed the work of the fathers, you know? So let's say the father has the labor, they serve, and they hand over to the next generation, Oftentimes, the next generation always carry on with this um, stronger form of anointing. So that's what has happened to me. So anyways, I grew up in the ministry. Um, I've I experienced everything about the ministry. In that, at that time, there's some, I called it the wilderness period because it was a period where drama wasn't really appreciated. But at my fathers, they walked by faith. Everything was faith. They eat by faith. They believe God that the next meal will come by faith. And you know, the full-time, and they're all in full-time ministry, all of them, they were all on full-time ministry. My dad was the president of Mozan Faith Ministry. He's on full-time. Also the fathers and the mothers that are in Mozan at that time, the families were all on full-time. And you will agree with me that the full-time of that time is different from the full-time of now. You know, the full time of now is a completely different. It's different. Back in the days, when you say full time, it's full time, completely full time, trusting God completely, totally. Now, things are changing now. I'm not saying that now it's a little watered down, but I'm just saying that the concept is different now. Now you have people. Uh, God has opened doors for so many ministers, and um, and in business side and different side, and those doors I source of blessing for the ministry you know so uh, the full time now is different the full time then you know so i experienced the ruggedness of the ministry the times when we had to um plant i, I experienced my father's planting um and, and and toiling and planting seeds planting crops to feed because then you just have to be a farmer to survive you know because you don't know where the next meal is coming from and then they banked, then they banked solely on, on uranium and God's blessings entirely, you know. So th th it was days where we always eat maize because maize was an easy crop to plant then, you know. So they planted maize, they harvested maize. With maize, we did different creative things. We had pop with maize, we had swallows with maize, we turned maize to rice. And so our life, I, I, I often say that our life was so messed up. Everything was messed, 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 messed. You know, but those, 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 those are the rugged times, you know. So when you hear Monzao now and how they've come, some people like the youth of my generation just want to be like that. They want to make movies like Monzao. They want to reach the heights of my family. They want to do things that our fathers have done, but the sacrifices that they have paid, they're not ready to pay that sacrifice. And if you're not ready to pay some sacrifices, they are not ready for the glory. You have to pass through the sacrifice to get the elevation, the glory that God wants to give to you. And as a matter of fact, God will make you go through rugged times so that when the times of glory come, you will not mess it up. You know, when the time of elevation come, when the time of promotion come, you will not mess it up. So I experienced all those ruggedness with them. You know, times where we had to, they had to be sent out of school because my parents could afford school fees and my dad would just tell me, he said, don't worry, Dami, the school fees will come. God will provide. And indeed, God provided. There, were, there was a time we had nothing to eat in the house and all of a sudden, the woman just drove into the house with bags of yam. We don't know this woman. We don't know where she came from. But at the nick of time, at the time where we were hungry, we needed food to eat. God supplied our needs. So those are the wilderness period, just like the Israelites when God was making them pass through the, the wilderness period where they had to depend and bank on God entirely for manna from heaven. That was it for us. We had to depend solely on God at that time for manna from heaven, in figuratively speaking now. So the woman just came in, drove in with bags of rice and two bags of yam and everything and just dropped it and went. And she didn't say her name. She didn't know where she came from. She just dropped and went. And we're packing bags of rice and there was so much joy that, wow, God indeed hears our prayers. God answered our prayers when we were at this. So I experienced all these things. So now when God is elevating us and giving me movies, reaching the old world, I, I always cast my mind back to where he's taking us from. And that's why history is very important because it helps us to appreciate where God is taking us to. When you understand where you're coming from, it's going to be very difficult to um, forget where you're going. So that's just my foundation. That's my basis. That's my background. So when you look at, you know, 
Um, and that's one thing I like about when, it, when we are talking about pastors, children, and uh, the, the foundation, uh, the foundational members, and um, people don't know what, what you went through. Um, at that point in time, I want to ask you, maybe, because I always ask pastors, children, most of, most of them, you know, that question. Have you ever questioned your parent? Why are we, why is our life so different from other people? Right. Why can't, why right. can't we just be like, why is it that we have to eat uh, you know, we use, you know, like the way you, your parents will say uh, maize and, and qualify maize, define maize in different ways. And even though it's a, mm -hmm. a, a kind of horrible, you know, stuff, but it would, the way they would we talk about it, you would, you would still eat it mm -hmm. with joy and give it like my mom would mm -hmm. do and give us a different, different kind of good name about uh, when you, you know, uh, there is called something Gary, Gary, Gary this Gary mm -hmm. thing, when you miss mm -hmm. Gary with oil, the palm oil, and mm -hmm. it says, Gary uh, Oyibo, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> so that you have to, you have, yeah, that, this fine Gary, and all, all, all yeah. sort of things. So the way she will yeah. uh, modify it and uh, uh, quote it, uh, for us, right. we, we, won't, we, won't, we won't be fighting on, on Gary, and I thought you finish it, just go drink water, and that will, will be good for the, right. uh, for, for the day. So, what right. at any time, you question mm -hmm. them and say, or you just ask questions as a child. You know, you know, as a child, I didn't ask questions because I thought that was the world. That was our world then. That we, so we, we saw no alternative. You know, everything was all, that was the world we saw. That we, There was no reason for, we grew up together. We all stood together. So I thought that was it. I thought that was how life is. I thought that was the world. There so was no at, at alternative. One, there was at, nothing at one, outside, at, as far as I'm concerned. So, so when did you know that now, it's different? I, I can relate exactly to what you're saying because there was a time my dad helped me, he had pap, you know, and he wanted to make ice cream for us. He said, I'm going to give you ice cream. And so what he did was that <laughs> he poured a lot of milk. He poured a lot of milk in that pap, a lot of sugar, a lot of milk and sugar, chocolate in that inside freezer. He brought it out the next day. He said, this is chocolate milk, ice cream, ice cream. That is this. <laughs> and I said, well, I said, wow, this is ice cream. It's sweet. But we're all tasting pap. We didn't know what it meant. So I think it, Two things actually made it so. Um, it it two things helped us not to. They dream of a world that does not exist. And number one, it's the approach, and the way our parents saw ministry. They saw ministry like it's life. They saw ministry that okay, we are not suffering. It's just a face, you know. So if 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 I had parents that complained and compared themselves to other people, probably I would have seen reason to compare myself to other children. If I had my dad that always talked about, ah, look at this minister always riding jeep, look at this person always in airport, look at this, look at that, look at that, look at us, look at us. See, we are just eating pap. If I had a father that complained all the time, probably I would have had reasons to complain. So I think a lot also has to do with parents too you know there is in we, we we had little actually we had so little but there was joy mm. there was so much joy we we're all together every evening we come together the children of Monzana then you know we are from different families we come together I saw my neighbor's child as my brother and sister because we grew up together literally we ate the same food so that I can't compare myself to him. You can't compare myself to him because we're eating the same thing. The same pap is what he's eating in, in his own house. This, the other one too is the same pap is also eating. So we come together in the evening. We have Bible study. There's this mommy, one of the mommies in the ministry that will lead us in Bible study, shares music, we watch music, we watch God in music. We go back to our sleep and everything. Go back to our houses and, and you know, so we it, there was this family um, atmosphere that knitted us together so tight that we had no reason to just look outside. We thought this was our world. We thought this was everything, you know? You know so that was how it was for a time at a point. But it got to a point when I started growing up and now, now this is how we answer your question. And I started, you know, you can't be a child forever. At a point you will get exposed. You will see things too. You will discover that, look, there's other, there's other things except outside these ministry things that my daddy and mommy are doing. Like, what's the point? That I got so, it, it was a point, um, in my life that I was so rude, so so angry at everything. I looked at everything and I started questioning on my parents. At this point, I was a teenager now. You know, I started questioning everything that my father stood for because I was like, why, why is all this happening, you know? 
uh, why am I why are we always why are we suffering ourselves? And you say Jesus loves us, I can't pay my school fees, I can't do everything. I got so rude to my parents, my dad was so upset with me. But one one day he was so upset, he flogged me, but then he called me again and said, Dami, you know, I love you. And when he said that, it, it broke me into tears because I realized that look, this man is going through a lot and still he's holding on to faith in God. Mm. What am I holding on to? Someone is going through a lot and still he's still holding on to one thing, faith in God that tomorrow will be bright. But look at me. I'm not going through one quarter of what he's going through and I'm all of, all, my head is all upside down. And so I told God, I said, I want to love you the way my father loves you. And that was what developed my relationship with Jesus. He was actually looking at my father and his experience with Jesus and how we interact with God, how he sees God as a friend, how he relates to God, how he talks to God. And how he holds on to God, regardless of what he passes through. That was what challenged me and, and inspired me to want to know God more for myself now. You know, because it's one thing to grow up from a Christian background. Then there's another thing to know God for yourself. And that's mm -hmm. what affects children, pastors' children. They have this um, knowledge of God imposed on them by their mm -hmm. parents. And they mm -hmm. don't know God for themselves. And that's what's going to affect you. Because when the challenges come, when the trials come, when the tribulation come, it's not going to be just head knowledge that will scare you through. It's going to be a revelation of who God is and his relationship that you, you have with him that will scare you through the trouble, that will scare you through those challenges. The relationship, how you see God as a father, how you see God as a best friend, how you communicate with God every day, how you talk to God and you relate with him every day. These are the things that will scare you through the hurdles, the challenges of life, you know. Yeah, no, you 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 really struck one huge point right there. You know, because many pastors' children grew up in the church. I mean, in the I, I mean, at home, only to being religious. Right. They don't they don't right. know any other thing apart uh, uh, apart from that. You know, because right. money, devotion, Bible study, everything. Mm -hmm. They have to be. They have to attend everything. But yes. most of the time, they don't have. They don't have relationship of. I mean, they don't have a relationship of the God of their father too as well. Yes. So they yes, just have, yes, they just, yes. they just know. Uh, and we ask them, some of them will say, I, don't, I, don't, mm -hmm. I can't even say, when I met God. Yeah, true. Now, <laughs> I, I watched one of your video one of one time, and uh, you were you were telling uh, challenges that you had at, at, at the beginning, early stage of your life, and, uh, mm. and uh, how miraculously you started uh, reading, reading and uh, can you just okay. tell me a little bit about that i would have played that video right okay now. i just I, I would like to play i i, I, I want you to, to say something about that yeah that, fact, as a matter of fact that experience is one experience i told god i'm going to share everywhere i have the opportunity to share because it it, it reminds me it's in, it makes me aware of the power of god in my life it makes me realize that look People may see Daniel Bamloy as a very good writer, but I know in myself that without God, I'm nothing. God is the one that makes me what I am now. God is the one that 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 lifts me up. That God is the it is it is it is Him that shines in me. It's God that shines in me. You know. So what happened was when I was young, at the age of say two, three, four, when my mates were reading and writing, it was a difficult thing for me to do. I couldn't read. I couldn't write for very strange reason, and that got my mom really upset. I remember every day time my mom will be spanking my head, be beating that. What is this? You cannot read in this thing. Okay, spell C A T. I can't spell it. Spell D O G. What everybody spelled. I couldn't spell it. It was difficult for me. And so my mom was upset. I remember one time we were coming back from school after my teacher had complained. At my teacher complained to my mom that, look, I have a problem. Maybe they should look at me very well and they should ask that having some spiritual fasting and prayer or something upon me because something is wrong with me. My mom was crying and she was eating my head and she was slapping my head. Then I had skin, you know, and there was no hair on my head. And she was slapping my head. I said, ah, what is it you cannot read? And I was crying and I was going home. I, and it was sunny then, I can remember. I was walking and I was crying and she was eating my head. And also she was crying too, you know. I remember a time the teacher called me one time and looked at me and said, Danny, what is your problem? But I don't know the answer to that question because I thought genuinely he was asking me what my problem is. I wanted to give him an answer of, okay, this is what, but I couldn't answer. I just couldn't read. Everybody was reading, you know? And so my mom decided to 
um, ask all our friends to teach us, some teachers who happen to be our friend. And they came together. One particular woman told my mom, he said, look, mommy, Dami, they are going to teach this boy how to read and he's going to excel. And so the woman called me and started teaching me first week, second week, third week, I still couldn't read. And so the woman told my mom, he said, don't worry, in God's time, everything will work out. And my mom believed that, <laughs> look, you will read when you will read. But imagine how frustrating that is for a mother when yes. everyone else can do what your son cannot do. And in fact, as a matter of fact, a school rejected me. A school rejected me because they said I was too academically poor to be accepted in that school. And so they rejected me. And that was what really made my mom really sad, you know, because no one, no mother wants a son rejected for anything. Every mother wants the best for, her, for the child. You know, so my, my mom does believe. But one day, one day I was acting drama, you know, um, a drama for myself. There was no audience, there was no cameraman, but sometimes my imagination just runs wide and I just start acting, you know, based on what I see my father's doing. I try to replicate that on my own. I see my father's acting drama so because as a kid, you want to just copy some things. And so I told my brother to come to be my interpreter. I will ask the pastor. Pastor, you will be the interpreter. I said, I had the Bible and I was just preaching and I was just talking to an imaginary audience. There was nobody there just for me and my brother and we're acting. And I was telling an imaginary audience that Jesus Christ loves you. Jesus Christ gave himself for you. Jesus Christ is ready to change your life because the Bible said, and I opened the Bible and the first time, for the first time in my life, the words of the Bible jumped right at me. And I started reading the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That oh, I was so thrilled. I was so excited. I ran about shouting, I can't read, I can't read, I can't read, I can't read. You know, and everybody, my dad, my mom came out and said, you can read. I said, I can read. They gave me the Bible. I read it. My dad was happy. My mom was happy. There was this book, story book that they bought for me a long time ago. Opened as one day. The, not, my knowledge will open up to read the, what was written in the book. And they gave it to me to read, and I read it, and she, they were thrilled. So it was on record that the Bible is the first book I read. But the part, there's a part in the Bible that makes so much sense to me anytime I read it. It says the entrance of your word brings light and understanding to the simple. So it's not what man taught me. Man tried to teach me how to read, but the Holy Spirit himself taught me how to read because I entered into his word. Since then, I don't joke with God's word. It's my life. It's my compass. It's everything. It directs me, you know. Yeah, because I, when I when I saw, I wanted to ask, how how, how come you open to John three sixteen and you are you started reading that, that? I I don't know, but I just opened something and I looked at the book, Bible and the first thing I read was that, and that was what stuck, you know, and that was what I read out. Wow. <laughs> That, 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 so yeah, that I, informs me that since then I realized that, look, if so far, for as long as I'm connected to God, he is the one that gives me everything that I need for ministry, the right message, the right story, the right script. You know, I, I don't write a script until I stay in God's presence, because I know that is where the secret comes from. It's not from here, because I know there's nothing much up here. The boy up here really cannot do much because I, I know my genesis. I know I cannot, I know, I know what happened in history. So I know, I knew where I'm coming from. So I know there's nothing much up there, but it comes from relationship with God. So it's like, you know, when you partner so much with somebody who is brilliant, whether I like it or not, the more you partner with that kind of person, you may be the dullest person, but one day, one day, people will look at you because you partner with this black person, the attributes of that person will rub off on you. So that's, that's my life, you know, partnering with God just takes me to a level where people see me and say, this boy is brilliant, but I know I'm not brilliant. It's the God in me that's doing all the work. Mm, mm, mm. So now let, let's look at, let's look at the aspect of the, of the, of the, of the ministry that you, yeah. at it. when you look at, when you look at, um, I'll, you're, you're being in the ministry right now, you know, I would say, you know, from childhood anyway. So, right, but seeing that, has it ever occurred to you that I'm going to take over? I mean, I mean, I'm going to be part of this ministry, you know, one time. I'm going to, uh, you know, even though we, as a child, we, you know, we, we we play around. But mm -hmm. at what point in time did you actually take this work as a kind of a profession that you say, okay, yeah, this is what God is God is calling me to. 
Um, it started up when my parents gave us the picture of who we really are. They, 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 are, they were so open to us. And it's not just me, actually. My brother, my sister, the children in Mount Zion, there is this constant reminder that, look, this is your ministry. This is your ministry ever since we were young. So there, there was never a spark that, oh, I could do this. I could do it. I could be a drummer. Since we are young, since we are small, there's this consistent, um, consistent talking, consistent teaching that, look, you can end up being something else. So you can end up being a teacher. You can end up being a banker. You can end up being a minister. You can end up being a this. But this drama ministry is still your ministry. You will still come back and do this call. Because what God has revealed to us, I'm talking about my parents now, their conversation, that what God has revealed to us is that it's a generational ministry. It's going to flow down for our children, to our children's children. And so since we're young, they've been imputing it in us. They've been telling us, they've been talking to us. They've been, they've been enlightening us, you know. So that's why every time, remember days, when the fathers and Monzana are fasting, we children, we also fast. I, when I told my wife I've been fasting as, as young as two years, she said it's not possible. She said it's not possible for someone two years to fast. Mm -hmm. Then I asked my parents, mom, what age did I start fasting? She said, I think, she said, I think you started fasting younger than you were two, you know? Then we didn't know it was fasting. We we're just crying that when we eat our food, but it was, <laughs> it, was it was like an hunger strike, you know? <laughs> so we're like, what? Well, imagine <laughs> we're young then. So we will stand before the clock. We're like three, three, two, three years. We will stand before the clock and we'll be looking, waiting for 12 o'clock to just knock because the hunger, they can't take it anymore. So <laughs> the fasting didn't make sense to us then. <laughs> but the purpose of everything was to make it, to make sure we have an understanding that we are not isolated from the ministry. So as young as we were then, we went through the spiritual discipline that our parents went through. It wasn't as hard as what they went through. So let's say they were going into marathon fasting. They will make sure we went to, uh, we'll make sure our own fasting stopped at 12 o'clock or one o'clock, you know? So we children would just sit down and be waiting like, <laughs> when we this fasting end, oh God, when we this fasting end. <laughs> so, and when the fasting ends, they will give us our, as usual, pap and sugar, one cup of sugar, with one cup of pap, <laughs> one cup of sugar, one cup of cup, one cup of sugar for each child has a cup of pap and a cup of sugar. And we take it and yes, it's time to play. And so we start playing again. You know, the next day is another day. We'll come again. And to us, it was like torture then. But later we realized that slowly, slowly, gradually, we become so addicted to that life that is now becoming a part of us. It makes so much sense now, you know? So since we were young, wasn't it's not just me. I, my brother is so much into ministry. My sister is so much in the ministry. The children of the fathers, some of the fathers and mothers in Mazan, I'm sure you see some of them in a couple of our films. They are doing exceptionally brilliant in ministry now, you know. And it's it's, it's part of the training, the childhood training and dealings from the fathers and the mothers, you know. So it's not. That's why raising a child is not a one day thing. You don't just wake up all of a sudden when the child is over 18 and say, now you are going to enter ministry for a year. You didn't tell him about ministry. You threw the child abroad. The child didn't know nothing about ministry. He didn't know the also you went through, the struggle you went through. And you just think you will just bring him home and just hand over ministry to him. It doesn't really work that way. You know, it starts from the roots. It starts from the foundation. You know, so the foundation I've received just made me realize that, and also that's one aspect. And also I've always had passion for drama. I've always had passion for drama. The passion has always been there. I remember days I will get a paper, you know, I don't know anything about camera work, but I told myself as a little boy that I'm going to be a director of photography, a cameraman, summer, summer. I want to shoot Mozion film. That, that's been my dream. That one day, one day I will shoot Mozion film. So when I was a little boy, I will roll paper like this. I will do like this. And I will tell you, my, I will gather my friends together, my brothers and or sisters around. I'll gather my, them together with my friends. I will give them a short script to act. Sometimes we reenact some scenes 
from past Nazarian films like Agbar and La and other things or Bideshu or other films, I'll remark them and I'll imagine that there are lights and the cameraman and director and I'll be telling them action, action, action. And we'll lead to them, we didn't do anything. Come, the paper was my camera then, you know, that was all I had then, you know. So one day we were in a retreat, prayer and fasting. And um, as usual, I was much older then, I was like 15. And my dad was asking every child in Mount Zion, what do you want to be in the future? What you want to be is what we're going to pray for. And that's going to be it. You know, and so they asked every one of them. Some said they want to be a doctor, some said accountant. And they asked me, what do you want to be? And I told them, I said, I want to be a cameraman because I want to shoot for Mount Zion films. And they prayed for all of us, you know. But right now, the prayer that was prayed in, on the retreat ground, I see it manifest now. And as, we, as I handle some of Mount Zion films, and I shoot some of the Mozambique productions. Now I cannot even count the number of films I've shot. It's a lot, you know. So what 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 would be your um uh your first movie that you acted in? My first movie that I acted in was in Perilous Time, and that was two years. I was two years then. Um, the title is Perilous Time. It's still on YouTube. Maybe it's in three or four. You see a little boy crying. I didn't want to go to school, I was crying. And so his mama was trying to drag him to school. But uncle, it's time to go to school. And I was just crying, I don't want to go to school. Now, the reason why I was crying actually was because I was afraid of the camera. The camera and everything, I saw the light, I so saw the, the guy, camera, the, the I saw was, the attention. I, I the child was, the child was genuine, genuine. I was afraid of people and the camera. And so my, my father was a director and his wisdom, he converted it, he changed the concept that the reason why I was crying was because I didn't want to go to school. So when people saw me after the production, they thought, this boy is a good actor. He cried so realistically. But they didn't know the reason why I was crying was because I was scared, not because I was being realistic. Although I can say I was being realistic that I was afraid of what I was seeing around, not because of, I was not in character. You understand what I'm saying? I was not in character. I was, I was afraid of what was going on around. So as a little boy, I just naturally you will burst into tears. But the creativity of the director was like, okay, good. Let him keep crying, let him keep crying. So you, they gave, the, they changed the dialogue of my mother in the film. And so she was like, oh, why are you crying? You will go to school now. This is your first day, don't worry, you will be fine. And when the film came out, they just tagged me a talented actor because of the natural <laughs> tears. <laughs> that, 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 was, that was good. And that, that kind of motivated motivate you more to say, okay, yeah, I mean, because right. I can see yourself and say, oh, okay, after this one, I, 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 I you know, <laughs> true, true. To be able true. To that. So, but when true. you look at um, that that time, you know, so I, but I'm like, I mean, Perilous Time was the first movie that you acted in, but what would be yeah. your own first production? Uh, when it comes to the first film that I produced, I've written script after that, I started. This is um, eight years I've written script for stage, for movies, for, no, not for movies, for stage. Uh, sometimes I just write stories and I just keep them in the shelf. But the first movie that will be produced and written that I have an impact on is, was Youthful Lost. It was written 2005. You know, I was much younger then, you know. So it was Youthful Lost, 2005. I was still in the secondary school set, you know. So, that was that was my first film, you know. And I was I was I think I was fifteen years then. Yeah, so that was that was my first film. My dad directed that one, but I was I wrote it. Yeah. Now, uh, when you look at um, challenges, what are the challenges that you that that that, that we have in Christian movie compared to um, you know uh, other movies that we have outside the secular music I mean secular media so what would you say the you know uh when we want to say if there's any any challenges in Christian movie what would, what would be the challenge first of all every ministry has its own challenge you know ch um, challenges that challenges are every it's inevitable you know you will not have a smooth sail so far for as long as you're in ministry that will never be a smooth sail that will be one challenge or the other and it's a challenge that you keep fighting and that's why we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, we overcome by the blood of Jesus, we overcome by holding on to the promises of God. You know, because the devil will always want to attack. So far, you're in ministry. Even pastor, pastoral work, there are challenges there. <laughs> there are lots of challenges as a pastor. You know, there are challenges in mission field, there are challenges everywhere. You know, so in drama too, there are challenges. But what makes us even makes us more even challenges because 
we are now in the gospel aspect of it. We are evangelizing. We are evangelizing at the same time, entertaining, you know, striking the balance. With the balance, there will always be a challenge. You, you, you want know, to say that word in the word? I just you want to say that word again? Evan, evangelizing. You know, we are evangelizing, <laughs> and at the same time, we are entertaining. You know, so striking that balance, that will always be a challenge. People in the world are just entertaining, but we we're not just entertaining. There is the element of evangelism that is that takes the major aspect of what we do, and you know, so so far we are in that field. For as long as we are in that field on its own, it's enough challenge, you know. People in the world will tell you, the circular will tell you that to make a movie is difficult. Every movie you make, it's a landmark. It's difficult to make a film. It's difficult to make a movie. And the reason is because you're combining all the forms of art into one umbrella, under one umbrella. You know, you're combining writing, you're com acting, you're combining music, you're combining um, set design, you're combining everything. Just think about it. Everything is all combined, fused into one element and nothing must go wrong. You know, for those in the music side, they're just doing music. You know, they can concentrate focus on music. But if you're into drama, <laughs> you're doing everything and nothing must go on. So you must know at least a little bit of everything and nothing must go on. You are combining um, vi videography with acting and music and set design and artistic design, you know, all these things, nothing must go wrong. And if anything goes wrong in it, it's to tell it in the old film. You know, so let's even leave ministry aside and look at the act aspect of it, the professional aspect of it is challenging on its own. Now let's now bring in ministry. Don't forget that the professional aspect is challenging, you know, they are bringing in ministry again. Now the devil is angry again. So that's a double. So we are doing double work than those, those who are outside there in the world. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's double work, it's double effort. It's But one thing that stands us out, one thing that makes us different is the grace of God. Everything we do, we do it by the grace of God. And I mean, it, I'm saying this with all sincerity. It's not in how professional we are or how skillful we are. It's just the grace of God that makes us outstanding that, you know, we can use little resources to achieve something great. And people out there, we just watch our film and say, this is exceptional. It's the grace of God because we, we know. We know the things we have to manage. We know how much we manage things to achieve some things. We know the things we do that we know, that we tell ourselves and say, this is terrible. But people out there, we watch it and say, this is magnificent. But it's the grace of God. This is the grace of God that covers our shame. You know, it's the grace of God. So when you look at um, the Mount Zion ministry, um, I think the first time I had an encounter with uh, Mount Zion ministry uh, was I was in, I was in Accra at, at that time and um, we came to okay. in our church. Uh, church, yeah. And, uh, I think in Ikeaku Estate at that, 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 that time. So that was mm -hmm. the first time I had this um, a, a encounter with, with the ministry. And um, mm. since, ever since then, uh, I, I've been trying. Um, in my school, back, you know, our church started the drama ministry too, I, in which I joined. And um, mm. you know, I acted a little, I, you know, uh, I was acting drama until I get to secondary school. And after secondary school, mm -hmm. you know, so I focus on my music ministry. You know, mm -hmm. um, that's just only thing. It, 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 uh, how, I've, how far I've done with the drama stuff, you know. But I can tell you, uh, I got the inspiration from uh, Mount Zion Ministry. And, oh, wow! Uh, the mm -hmm. inspiration that I mean, the inspiration that I got for, for drama started from Mount mm -hmm. Zion Ministry. The one that came wow. to uh, um, uh, acted in our church. And after that, mm. our church also started, you know, uh, there's a uh, pastor that uh, started a drama group in the church. So, which I do always, so I, I, when I saw that I opportunity, I joined. So, because I mm -hmm. have already have the inspiration. And when I, I went yeah, to school, inspiration. I, I, I refused to go to uh, uh, social, social graduate. I started mm. drama ministry in my school. Amazing. Because, Amazing. Mm. Because somebody, you know, because of the foundation, you, uh, right. I, I may not be. I, I may not say. I. I, I will say. Uh, I may now uh, come to 
uh, get trained by mm -hmm. Zion, but mm -hmm. it's that the right. truth proceeds into us. And uh, I, mm -hmm. thank God, mm -hmm. I thank God for that. So I right. say I hope uh, Daddy and Mommy Bamloi uh, that kind of a uh, honor. You know, because uh, we give God the glory. Know, where, where they, they, where they, oh, how many people that they are, their lives have already touched? So, right. That's just one one thing. Is uh, uh, under which uh, group are we going to categorize um, Monzaya Ministry? I, I, is Monzaya Ministry under Nollywood? Uh, are they also part of um, union like uh, uh, ENTP? Uh, yeah, Amba, yes. Uh, like that. Yeah, yes. Uh, so Mazan is under Ansidram. That's all Nigerian Conference of Evangelical Christian Drama. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's an association made up of drama ministers with the same goal of making films, and they are all over Nigeria. You know, you know. So it's it's an organized, very organized structured organization. So Mazam basically is under Ansidram. So uh, is Ansidram yeah. under Nollywood? Or... No, Ansidram, okay, now it depends now. Nollywood can be seen in two aspects or two phases. If you're looking at Nollywood as a cre as Nigerian film, films made by Nigeria, mm -hmm. you know, generally general films made by Nigeria, then yes, it's under Nollywood, but you know, we if we are looking at Nollywood as a sect of Nigerian films or a crop of Nigerian films from secular people who make films for entertainment, and um, you know, so no, Mozam is not under Nollywood in that sense. You know, because if you go out there sometimes and you say Nollywood, some people have the mindset that it just simply means all Nigerian movies, all right? But we know that that's not necessarily what it means. We know that Nollywood could also mean uh, a sect of film made, a secular films made in Nigeria. So I will not categorize Mozan as Nollywood. I will categorize Mozan as movies made as as under Ansidram, you know, because that's also an association that is strong and that's that yeah. where where they are, where they have the same understanding, now, understanding and vision. When you look at that, um, what you know, because I know you know, I've heard about. Uh, I think it, your uh, uh, dad wrote an article not of just of recent, and there was talking about. Um, Monzan has expanded to different nations or countries. So, yeah. Um, under what capacity is that? Is, is do you guys have school whereby you train mm -hmm. people? Uh, because I yes I remember back in those days we have some other people that started with um mm -hmm. with uh um Monzan like uh Ecola mm -hmm. uh. uh, uh thank you so yeah. all, all of them all of them like that they started they started with mm -hmm. they acted in mount zion and now they mm -hmm. you know i don't you know I, I can see that some of them have their own ministry to as well mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so do they have like something that has to do with you know trainings and you know how how did you break out or how do you uh, yeah so principally, when Mount Zion, we, we do have trainings. As a matter of fact, we are we are we have an affiliation with Ajay Crowder. So we run um, an affiliate university with Ajay Crowder, which started last year, where people come in and you know, and they get trained, and also they have certificates. Uh, Mount Zion with Ajay Crowder University, you know. So um, principally, when Mount Zion train, we don't train people to join Mount Zion. The, the, the principal aim of training people is to be independent drama ministers who like Mount Zion are making their movies and pushing it out for people to watch and get blessed and lives to be transformed. You know, so that's, so we, if you come to the drama school, that's the mindset, that's the um, understanding and that's the vision, you know. So um, Mount Zion have a school, 
And we've been running the school for for a long time. Before I can say almost almost before I was born, or even if uh, the nineties, some since the early nineties, it's that long. You know, I think the school will be okay. I think the school will be 30 years this year, you know. So I'm a little older than the school itself, you know. So the school will be so been trading for a long time. So now when you see different drama ministers, minister, uh, ministry, or you see movies that are Christian, it's not all Christian films that are Mount Zion films. Some films are Christian films from other ministries. Some films are Christian films from other you know, churches from other ministries, you know, but some, it was the time people thought all oh, Christian films. So far, it's Christian. So far, they see Evan Jared. So far, they see Kodali Shekho Kehu. So far, they see uh, all these uh, uh, popular actors. Then it must be Mozart film. It's not necessarily true, you know. Mozart is ministry is just a ministry like other drama ministries too. I know, but of course, yes, it's a parents ministry because God has used the ministry to birth so many ministries. You know, so many people came from Monzaun Institute. So many people are running with a vision that was ignited from Monzaun School. You know, so it's a parents ministry too, but it's an independent ministry like any other drama ministry. Do you, do you guys have any any trainings for uh, churches who is willing or the because I have to. Um, uh, come to your ministry, maybe your uh, like an open uh, enrollment uh, for churches who want to develop drama ministry in their church, and also yes. do you have um, affiliation abroad, like in US and you know? Oh yes, um, in the past we've had aff um, affiliations with so many ministries and churches, and uh, we've partnered with them. We've built churches with, we've built, sorry, um, drama ministries in different, we've helped build drama ministries in different churches. Um, I can give examples, like in the United States now, I know of a couple of churches that um, God has used more Zion to, to help the drama group, you know, especially when it comes to foreign missions, you know, churches and drama groups that really want to, you know, start a drama group and want to key into the vision, they do invite Mozan and Mozan help. Like, in fact, at the time we went to India, you know, and we're there for a couple of, yeah, in India, we made a movie there, you know, with the indigents, with the, with the people there, you know, and it was a very interesting experience. And it's from a church, it was a church, it was a redeemed church there, you know, and we didn't even use Nigerians, they were used in Indians there. You know, so it was very interesting because the director, the, my dad was the director, he didn't understand what they were saying. <laughs> I didn't understand what they were saying. Nobody understood what they were saying, but we just enjoyed the dialect, you know, and we were but shooting. So he had, to, he had to have, he had, yeah, he's on YouTube, Rupanta, you know. So he, had, he needed an assistant director, you know. So there was the assistant director, that would, that would help interpret what he's trying to say. You know, the only saving grace for us was that we, we wrote the script, so we understood the script. You know, so we understood the scene that was played as. Now, whether they are cursing us or whether they are blessing us, <laughs> we have no idea what they were saying. But it's very, it was a very, very interesting experience. We're also in Australia a couple of years ago. We've been to Australia like three times, you know, four, three, four times to raise German ministries too. You know, so that's how we function really. So in case anybody, for people that are watching and they probably want to, because I know of someone who was so uh, desperate, not that, not desperate, but, but she was just so longing to uh, to uh, meet with um, Monsignor um, uh, Ministry, you know, because she wanted mm -hmm. to join the ministry and I uh, started acting. She contacted me and I said, well, I don't really have a um, uh, connection with them. Uh, unfortunately, for, I mean, uh, luckily, I should say, I was coming to U.S. and I met Daddy on on the on the on the flight, and he mm. kind of gave me his email, but I lost it, <laughs> so I couldn't even help the person tell. So, well, I lost, I lost it, so I, I, I don't because I just met him that that day and I greeted him, and you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so we just, we just exchanged, exchanged pleasantries, and then uh, you know, he gave me his email, and uh, unfortunately, I lost it. So, but that for that for for the people like that, how can uh, they get 
hold of you or the mini how can he mm-hmm. get into the ministry for i mean to to, to fulfill your purpose in life yeah so before it was more complex before because before people had to invite us we'll come over and you know we cannot cover the whole world you can't cover everywhere you can only cover those god enables you and gives you strength to cover or uh, places god gives you strength to cover you can't cover everyone you know so before it was comfortable right now things are, are easier now things are easier it's easy to because right now we have online film schools now we have an online film school we do the fact um there's a time there was a monzion institute alumni fellowship online that they were from that they were from like over almost everywhere all over the world and they came together and they made a movie online really that is it. they actually made it like so imagine the the father the characters like the man his wife his children so the man who might probably be from australia the wife would be from the united states the daughter would be from canada and so with some creativity they just kind of connected it together maybe the wife is the husband is calling the wife hello i'm coming home and we know he's not going to come home because he's from australia talking to <laughs> his wife you know but it was a very lovely experience so we have the mozan alumni now so they can join online from anywhere from anywhere they can join online so it's it's easier now it's it's really easy now so what i would advise is two ways follow if you can follow us on social media you know on instagram and on facebook and because whenever sometimes we publicize these programs and if you are going to do some when, when we have an online film school you know you can join when we have the online fellowship you can join by that you are gradually building yourself when they want to have the online drama you can join you can be part of the drama group and everything that is done online gradually you are building yourself a lot of people have started ministry drama ministry by just joining online and they're doing great things they don't have to join physically they are not in nigeria they are abroad you know and you know and they joined online and now they are doing great things so the possibility now is very vast as opposed to what it used to be you know so it's what, what would, i just advise that your social what do you say your social media handle. yes so for me you can, um mike bamley let, let me let me start from my father his facebook account is mike bamley his instagram mike bamley is very as easy as that you know um for me is damlola mike bamloy on instagram on facebook damlola mike bamloy and on twitter too is underscore dam at damlola mike bamloy you know so um we will from time to time we post adverts we release adverts you know for awareness so people will know that these things are coming up so they can join up no yeah, yeah. um is your wife also part of um acting uh uh oh yes team in your so all your family and their spouse you also everybody's acting right now right yeah that's the beauty of the ministry the family ministry yeah so my wife is part of drama ministry as it is she's a doctor but she's also a part of the drama ministry she made a movie and her movie was made into a she made a book and her book was made into a movie like two years ago titled baby and the part 2 be released this sunday the new part 2 you know so she's the she's the story writer she's the uh, one uh, behind it so uh, yeah i i think mm-hmm. i have watched the first one but i i'm 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 mm-hmm. i'll be looking forward to see the second one mm-hmm. and yes that's, sir mm-hmm. that's just uh, wonderful so uh where i i know with uh, um the time is fast spent i just want to ask you what is your opinion about the way people are uh the challenges the church is facing uh these days i know uh have uh, acted uh, some challenge some things that goes, uh, that that is going on in the church these days you know uh mm. the irregularities in the church in the church uh or what we see that is not actually right in the church now what mm. do you see about the way people are, are antagonizing the church castigating mm. on the church these days abuse i mean insulting men of god including the men of god insulting one another too on mm. uh, on on social media and platform that everybody has these days because somebody can just wake mm. up tomorrow and just say oh, oh oh this one is this one is not good and start lashing out mm. and so so what is your opinion mm. on this area? 
Um, my opinion is that it's expected. And the reason is because we are in the end times and the Bible has predicted that some things like this will happen. You know, said in the end times, people will be lovers of themselves. You know, um, they will eat things that are godly. They will despise those that are godly. They will crucify even if you stand for anything godly, you might, you will be crucified. You know, so that's why nowadays it's so funny that when you speak the truth, sometimes the truth looks, uh, the truth when it's been said sometimes to so many people, you'd be surprised that the way they accept that still are saying lie and the lie is accepted and embraced as the truth. You know, so more people are running to lies, embracing lies, and less people are standing for the truth. It takes someone who really doesn't care about public affirmation, public um, embrace to stand up and say, this is what the Bible says, this is what it is. But then, even then, in the comment section of some social media, you will still see people blasting and lambasting someone for standing and speaking up for the truth. It makes you wonder that really what is going on. You know, is it that people should we should be running, shine away from the truth? But no, it's the end time. It's what the Bible says it's going to be. You know, but then, but even then, the army is an army is rising. God is raising and preparing a strong army. I believe because I see things now that are, God is setting up people now, a certain of visions now. Youths are catching fire now. You know, as opposed to how it was before. Now we have some, we have, even though the rate of youthful decadence, uh, terrible things are happening is, is alarming. Still, God is preparing a remnant that will stand for him and will proclaim his name. People who are on fire for God, people who are standing out for God. You know, we can say, we can come out and say things have gone so bad. The society is so bad there are no more christians again but i will i beg to disagree because even at that you know god is preparing the remnant and the remnants are on fire people are catching visions because um, the bible also says that your young and your, your sons and daughters shall see visions your old men shall dream dreams and when did the bible say this will happen it says it will happen in the last days you know so so many things are happening we see youths who are gifted for Christ doing amazing things, gospel music artists doing amazing things, releasing powerful songs that literally are setting people free. You know, music artists that are, from, that, that are for God, that are standing for Jesus Christ, proclaiming the name of Jesus, and songs that are literally setting people free. Music, dramas and movies that are literally, you know, breaking yokes, setting people free, you know. And these are the things that are happening in the church. So in as much as we see that we can agree on the negative things happening in the church, which is expected, we should also agree on the positive things that God is doing in the end time. Because uh, this, this is the end time. As much as bad things are going to be happening, there are also going to be mighty things happening through those who are connected to God. Yeah. Just before we go, uh, would you like to mentor somebody and also what was your advice for the for, for the youth of these days? Yeah, my advice for the youth is the Bible passage that says, seek you first the kingdom of God and every other thing will be added to you. You know, but sometimes unfortunately that we seek every other thing instead of the kingdom of God first. We seek every other thing and we neglect God's kingdom, you know, and it's it's so apparent, it's so obvious in the way we, um, we the way we push out. It's sometimes it's when when you when you when you see youths who or you see a youth who is all about my me myself and I and what I want to achieve for myself, the money I want to make for my pocket, the job I want to get for myself everything is for me then that person is not in line with what god wants as a youth for this time because i believe at this time if you seek god's kingdom first so many things will begin to happen in your life first thing first is discovery of purpose discovery of purpose when you discover purpose it's not more about you it's not more about even your purpose it's not more about your agenda it's about God's purpose. And I've never seen someone who has discovered purpose and is running with the purpose live a shallow life. 
that kind of person is always exalted. God exalts and raises up a youth that has discovered purpose and is ready to go all out to fulfill that purpose, to fulfill that God-given purpose, you know. So we have so many people, so many youths who haven't discovered purpose, but they're just following the bandwagon effect, just following the normal, regular life of, I'm just get a job, have a wife, you know, give back, you know, work, earn salary, buy food for the house, you know, eat, sleep, we'll go back again, new job, then a normal 360 life. That's not a good life to live. The best life to live, the best life to live is a life of purpose, a life that you know that I'm God has given me this purpose. I'm passionate about this purpose because it is God originated and I'm going to run with it to the end. Purpose is strong. Purpose is stronger than death. Purpose speaks even after you are gone. You know, purpose makes way for you. It paves way for you. And that's what I want to encourage you to discover your God-given purpose. And it begins when you seek first the kingdom of God. Yeah. You are a full-time mini, uh, uh, drama minister, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if, if if so, if I put you on the spot right now and uh, and tell and said you you know you are because I know you are you are as a director and as a producer, you are aware of what they call solo solo drama or mono drama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will disappoint you in that area. <laughs> So, I will really so if, I, if, so if I put you on the spot and say, okay, can we just give us one, you know, two, one or two minutes mono, mono drama, will, 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 will you be able to do that? <laughs> no, I will disappoint you. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will really disappoint you. And the reason is because for me, some people have grace with that, to be honest with you. Some people have that grace. You know, I can mention one, and that's, I know of someone who does that, Evan, Evan Jared, that the Evan Jared does that so effectively. If you put him on spot right now, and you point the corner at him and say, Art drama. He will give you 10 drama. He can give you 10 solo dramas. It comes out naturally fast. But I'm not that fast. <laughs> I like to take time to receive first. When I receive and I'm sure that this is it, then I push out. You know. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 also, I also want to use this medium to thank you. I said, thank you so much for for your uh, for coming. You, sir. Uh, one of thank the you, I, sir. one of my goal is to um, I, I believe. You have been able to reach out. I mean, your 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 coming out today has touched many people, young folks, uh, uh, bless God. older ones, and everyone that are bless God. aspiring to come uh, to join um, uh, 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 drama ministry, because your mm -hmm. own is not just performance, but is a ministry on its own. So, mm -hmm. and when it, mm -hmm. a ministry is a ministry, he has to he has to have impact in people's lives. So he has kind of right. an undertone. Well, uh, with that, and I mm -hmm. thank you for being here. Your life alone has uh, uh, spoken, you know, um, uh, light into other people who are you bless God, sir. Used. So, um, mm -hmm. with that, uh, I, I, I hope if, if we if we want to contact you again to to get out of daddy and mommy or uh, other all those people, Evan Jared, uh, uh, Kolade or Kilwo, mm -hmm. all of them. And uh, uh, you, you, you will do us a favor to link us up with them, right? Uh, sure. Oh, okay. Sure. So, because I'm going to hold you accountable for that. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> we, we, I look forward to, to actually be able to meet with them at, or, and also be, bring them. Uh, because there are a lot of people that I want to hear from them sometimes. Not just, mm. only, you know, I, there are people that want to, you know, uh, that, you know uh, hear what, they've been through uh i watched right. one uh, one play that they, that they, you know that you know uh is a story about um your parents how the ministry mm -hmm. started you know right and, and yes I, I, yes I, I looked at that and i said indeed this is this is god himself this is mm -hmm. god. So, right but i'm look right. i look forward to see daddy and mommy as well so that i can it, it it's more it carry more weight when it comes from us yes Yes, yeah. true. Now your experience agree. now it carry more weight. I can't. Nobody can tell that story like you do. <laughs> and, uh, and I thank God for your life. And uh, tell, um, yeah. yes, sir. Brother, uh, I like I like his show. That he also, you know, his monodrama that he also, you, Josh, Josh, 
Josh and Joshua or something like that. Jay and Josh. <laughs> yes, sir. So, mm-hmm. and then I, I, so, so that you know that I follow you guys all the time. You know. Uh, thank you. Thank you so I, much. I really, really, mm-hmm. I, and I thank God for what God is doing in your life. And uh, with, the, yes, with your wives, all, all their talk shows, you know, mm-hmm. I, I follow you as well. So we want to thank uh, you. Thank you. Me. Thank you so much. I, I yes, sir. Bless God for your life and I pray that God will continue to mm-hmm. uphold you. Um, Amen. Amen. Very well. You will finish strong, Amen. and uh, Amen. many lives will be will, will be saved through your ministry. And uh, Amen. People will see your life and Amen. follow it, and that will be your Amen. In the mighty name, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Uh, for Thank this you. Time. I really, really, really. Uh, yes, sir. Did you Thank any, you. Maybe, do you have any fi- final word before we before we go? Uh, I think I've said all the final ones. <laughs> Otherwise, I would just be repeating myself. Thank, again. thank you so much. But thank you uh, for having me. I'm so grateful. It's a lovely. It has been a lovely time with you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And I look forward to mm. uh, uh, connect with you whenever you come to US. Don't forget, you have a brother here that you you know in Utah because I'm in Utah here. Yes, so, sir. So you have. A oh, great. Uh, and we have not. We, uh, actually, we have nice. not. We have, I don't think we. Most of that when all of you comes, you just go to Texas and everything. Texas, I'm, yeah, we're in I'm, Texas sometimes. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm making a uh, uh, Macedonia call right now. Come to the Macedonia <laughs> and help us to us. So we want yes, to, to us. Well. So uh, look, anytime you come, just let us know and we'll be able to uh, work something out. Thank you so much. Okay, no problem, Thank sir. You Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. God yeah. Bless you.